Good morning, everyone. We're in the capital of Slovakia, Bratislava. Today, we're going to be taking you on a walking tour. I am very excited for today. It has the makings of a great day. We're going to be exploring a brand new city. The weather is perfect. We've just passed through St. Michael's Gate and this is the entrance to the old town. It's also the last surviving medieval tower in Bratislava. It looks to be under construction though. The old town of Bratislava also lays claim to the best preserved medieval city. Holly has finally decided to stop using my phone and on top of that to get a new phone and we keep stopping after every two minutes for her to take photos and her to tell me this camera is amazing. The camera is really good. The screen is so bright. <laughs> we have just reached the main square of the old town of Bratislava. And I gotta say, in terms of how well preserved it is, it's definitely up there. One of the fun things to do while I'm in a new city is to try to discover some hidden statues. <laughs> We have never ever gone out of our way to discover <laughs> hidden statues. The only statues we come across have been meticulously researched and coordinated. It's never like, oh, you know, let's go on a treasure hunt to no. find a statue. All right, when I was doing research for Bratislava, I came across um, lots of different blogs that said there are tons of statues all throughout the city. So I made a list of some of them, and as we entered the main square, I think I've already spotted two of them. This one is the town guardhouse. We're in front of our second statue and Holly's made a keen observation and stated that this might be Napoleon. There's a French embassy right behind it and he's got that Napoleon hat. Everywhere you turn there's something interesting to look at. This roof right here is really cool. It's all tiled and it makes a real pretty design. Check it out. Right behind us is a beautiful pink palace. I think it's called Primate's Palace. Really? Yeah. Like the monkey primate? I don't know. Oh wow. But it does look like uh, it's out of a movie set or something. It's very cool. It's a really pretty pastel pink. We just made it to the main square of the pink palace and there's a very weird and cool looking statue of a guy stabbing a serpent not really sure what that's about however the building is very cool and quaint as holly mentioned earlier bratislava is filled with unique statues and we're heading towards one that's called kumil we found kumil the man at work and he's a pretty popular guy because there's a line to take pictures with him chloe call her chloe treat treat We've just seen our fourth and final statue of Bratislava and we're walking towards it now. It looks like most of the statues are pretty close to the main square. All four that we've seen have been within a pretty quick walking distance. I like walking through Bratislava's old town. It's very, very pretty and it's surprisingly clean. Yeah, I also like the fact that there are lots of buildings with pretty pastel colors. So we just came across a pretty green one the pink palace was beautiful and now we're headed towards St. Elizabeth's Church. <laughs> Holly's keen eye has picked out something. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what Art Nouveau is but we did see some examples when we were in the Baltic states and I think I found another example here. Also besides the statues that are everywhere they also have lots of cool street art in Bratislava. We've just made our way to the Blue Church and it's approximately a 5-10 minute walk from the old town you'd say? Yeah, it's not too far. Yeah, it is east of the old town. Pretty easy to get to, they've marked it out pretty well. And it's definitely worth a visit because this church is very cool. The Blue Church is also uh, called St. Elizabeth's Church and the architect for the church was Hungarian and so this church has been described as a Hungarian gaudy church because it does kind of resemble um, 
Gaudi's designs in Spain. In fact, that was my first reaction. I was like, it kind of has a Gaudi-esque feel to it with the blue tiles and the in inlays and everything. Yeah, it definitely does look like Gaudi. So this is the Hungarian Gaudi. Church, Church. in Bratislava. Yeah. From here, we're going to go to the Bratislava flagship restaurant. We're getting hungry, so we are going to make our way back to the area closer to where we've been where we've been staying and have some lunch try some traditional slovakian cuisine bratislava flagship restaurant is one of the biggest restaurants in europe and it's the place to go to try traditional slovakian cuisine bratislava flagship restaurant has so many different parts to it the first part when we enter in it, it's basically a replica of an old alleyway so it shows you what the houses would look like um, if they were still there They also have a brewery downstairs as well where they brew their own beer. Another cool feature of this restaurant is that it was a former cinema, so you can see the cinema curtains right behind the bar. The restaurant is also really cool. We're sitting in the main hall and the wood is real wood. There is stained glass on the second floor and it's actual authentic stained glass. Uh, this building has been many different things in the past. It was a church, it was a monastery, it was a cinema. So it's got it's got a really cool feel because you can see all of the elements of its uh, former self. The whole reason why we're here is to try out some of the local cuisine. So we've started off with a garlic soup. So this garlic cream soup is served in a loaf of homemade bread and it's served with cheese from their own farm. I am very excited to try some garlic soup. Even though it's sunny outside, it's actually quite cold. So this would warm me right up. And that smells so good. It's super creamy. Never had garlic soup, have you? I've never had garlic soup now. Garlic? <laughs> that is very good. <laughs> oh man, my nasal passages have all opened up. <laughs> That is really nice. This cheese makes it so much more creamy. Like, I don't know if you can see it, but it's. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be good. I'm very excited to try the homebrew. It's got a kick. I like it. We've also ordered a sampler platter so we can try several different Slovak cuisines. The sampler platter has dumplings with sheep's cheese, it has five pierogies with sheep's cheese and it has dumplings with cabbage. This is so good. I love cabbage. I love bacon. I think the cabbage is sauerkraut. The bacon and the cabbage flavors. It's like a smoky bacon flavor and a sauerkraut kind of sour flavor. It all blends perfectly together. That is a really nice dish. I am gonna have the pierogi with sheep cheese. I recently just had pierogies in Poland, so I'm interested to see how these will stack up with those ones. It has a very salty flavor to it, but really good. The pierogies are very soft. Is it uh, just cheese on the inside? Mm-hmm. It's like um, feta. Okay. Pretty good. Okay, the third item on our sampler platter is the national dish of Slovakia and these are dumplings with sheep cheese. So it's kind of like gnocchi dumplings. It's like macaroni and cheese. Yeah, the sheep's cheese flavor is a very strong flavor, but it's a very, very nice cheese. After a late lunch at Bratislava flagship restaurant, we're going to be heading to the west of the city to St. Martin's Cathedral. Even though it's been a sunny day today, after lunch, it has gotten considerably colder now that the sun is setting. I'm kind of glad that it is around a 10 minute walk so we can warm ourselves up just a little bit. We are at St. Martin's Cathedral and it is absolutely grand. Walking up to it was pretty cool. Um, I think we came at the right time because there was no one there. So we got some pretty cool street views of the cathedral. I believe that 
maybe 19 to 20 coronations took place in the church right behind us, St. Martin's Cathedral. And along this wall, it has a picture and the name of each of the kings and queens that were coronated in the cathedral. Our penultimate stop is to go to Bratislava Castle. In order to reach it, we have to cross the main road and we're going to do it the old-fashioned way, which is going through the city walls. We're not entirely sure where we have to go, but I'm sure it'll be an adventure. Another tourist attraction that is very unusual in Bratislava is this UFO building. So there is a bridge, and above the bridge, there is a restaurant that you can take an elevator to go to the top to get great views of the city. Do you know what it reminds me of? Have you seen War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise? It reminds me of the uh, alien robots from War of the Worlds. It's kind of cool walking on the old walls and being the only one here. After crossing that bridge, we are on the western side of the city and Bratislava Castle is actually on top of a small hill. So from here on out, we are going to be climbing stairs. How's the gang keeping up? Chloe's in the lead. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> She's double stepping. I think we've almost made it to the top. And once you make it up here, the views of Bratislava are beautiful. We have reached the entrance to Bratislava Castle. Unfortunately, Chloe is not allowed in, so we'll have to take turns in going in. All right, Al, you go in first. I'll wait. The cool thing about Bratislava Castle is that you can actually walk the grounds for free. To enter the castle and to see the exhibitions, you do have to pay an amount. This castle is so grand. It's got those same red colored tiles that we've seen in the medieval old town city. So I think that might just be a feature of medieval Europe, red tiles. I'm just entering the inner walls of the castle and this is the Baroque Gardens. It's pretty gorgeous. I've just reached the main entrance of the castle and the views from here are genuinely breathtaking. You can see the entire city, you can see the UFO bridge, you can see the old town, you can see the river Danube and uh, not to mention the building behind me, the actual castle, is phenomenally beautiful. I wish uh, Holly was here so we could see this together but she isn't because of Chloe so I have to run back down so she can also come up and see this view. I ran all the way back. I have now Chloe and Holly has gone inside to inspect the castle. Um, I tried to do it as fast as I could before sunset and uh, before it closes. I think we came at the perfect time to see the Bratislava Castle because the sun was just starting to set and it was so nice to just look out over the Danube River and see the castle and see the bridge and the UFO restaurant place. It was really nice. Okay, the most iconic part of Bratislava is definitely the castle and now that we've seen it, I think our city tour is complete. Thank you for watching this vlog. Please subscribe to the channel, we have new videos coming out on Tuesdays and Fridays, so make sure you get your one-way ticket with us. Thank you!